Hello, this is Gary Pinnell with Bible-Christian.org and we're in Romans chapter 6 today. So if you would like to get your Bible and follow along with us, we are working our way through Romans and we're just getting into some sections that really need some detail instructions. So we'll look at that. Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? All right. Some people say, well, if God forgives us for our sins, well, then let's just keep sinning and, and more grace will come as a result. God will use more of his grace to forgive our sins. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? We're born again. We've turned away from sin, turned to Christ to save us. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Right. When we get baptized after we're saved, we're born again when we believe, but then we go on to show other people that we have been saved because they cannot see the inside of us what has happened. They can't see our faith, but they can see if we go down into the water and are immersed in the water and come up out of the water. If we're baptized, in other words, then it is a picture of us dying with Christ and rising with him. And so that's what uh, baptism is a picture of, and Paul is pointing this out. Therefore we are buried with him through baptize, baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we will also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Coming up out of the water is a picture of how Jesus rose from the dead. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Now that seems kind of strong, doesn't it? That we are crucified with Christ. Our old nature, when we're saved, our no old nature is to be considered crucified. In other words, dead. And so often people will go back to that old life and, and uh, try to resurrect it and try to live the way they were living before, go back to the world. That's like the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. Uh, some of them said, oh, we want to go back to Egypt. Well, Egypt is a picture of sin and the old life, and Pharaoh is a picture of Satan in our old life. And so, no, we want to go on with the Lord to... Uh, kill that old nature to realize that it's dead and to uh, live that way. So we still have the old nature, but it is not supposed to be ruling us and not supposed to be in control. The Holy Spirit should be in control in our life. So then it says, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified, past tense, with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So we're not going to follow Satan anymore, whatever he says to do, doing it. Verse 7, for... He who has died has been freed from sin. All right, so if you're born again, you are no longer a slave to sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Okay, we will live with him in the new Christian walk that we're living in, knowing that Christ, having been 
raised from the dead dies no more okay so also we're going to be uh, resurrected uh, once even if we were to die our body will be resurrected death no longer has dominion over him it didn't have a dominion over Jesus and now it doesn't have dominion over us that means it is not in control any longer where uh, death is no longer in control of our life Christ is in c control for the death that he died he died to sin once for all but the life that he lives he lives to God so we're forgiven our past is, if we really meant it, and we're truly born again, then it's gone, that old way of life. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Some people that I talk to, they will just uh, hang on to the old life, and they say, oh, well, I, I can't believe anymore, and I, I don't know. Uh, well, that's not of faith. That's not of God. If you're truly born again, you know it. You know that there was a change in your life. Now, does that mean you're perfect? No, we won't be perfect till we get to heaven. There are three types of sanctification. There's a sanctification that you get when you're saved. All right, so your old nature is dead. Sanctified uh, means to be uh, separated. Uh, there's a separation. And then as we walk with the Lord, he helps us to walk practically with him and we live in sanctification. Now, but temptation is still there. The old nature is still there even though were to consider it dead and to live as if it is crucified then that's why the one verse paul says i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but it's christ who lives in me and i believe that's in philippians but and so that another sanctification is going to get to heaven will be totally away from even the temptations to sin and will be totally sanctified there so three sanctifications all right uh so let's go ahead and uh, see what else it says verse 10 for the death that he died he died to sin once for all but the life that he lives he lives to god all right so we're talking about jesus but also that should apply to us likewise you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it and its lust. Okay, so there's a Christian walk. And First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness of God. When I was going to Bible school at Multnomah School of the Bible, which is now Multnomah University in Portland, Oregon, uh, we had a professor and he was saying that when he was first saved, he saw nothing wrong with smoking cigars. So he was uh, reading his Bible one day and smoking his cigar. And the Lord spoke to him about, oh, why do you have this still? You know? <laughs> and so got to thinking about it. He said, really, I don't need it. Why, why do I? So he threw away his cigars. And um, he didn't want that old practice anymore. He gave it up and he served the Lord. And I believe that was Dr. Mitchell that said that. All right, when I was there, I was there in 1970 through 73. But anyway, 
one of the things that we need to do is to uh, bit by bit uh, start living for the Lord and to realize that we don't need these old things, these old habits. Maybe smoking, maybe it's uh, drinking, maybe it's uh, marijuana and drugs or anything. Uh, maybe it's uh, sometimes people have these uh, addictions to even over-the-counter drugs. Uh, we need to give those things up that if they're causing us to sin. I had a friend, I uh, haven't seen him for a long time, still a friend, but anyway, he said that he had to throw his computer in the trash can. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, well, because the temptation was too strong for him to even get on the Internet. Now, the Lord helps us. And uh, I get on the Internet, but uh, I ask the Lord to give me strength not to get into anything that I should not get into or see anything that I shouldn't see. So every area of our life we have to dedicate over to the Lord and trust him to give us victory in our lives. Verse 12, therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. We'll see this again in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. In other words, uh, we're not, some people say, oh, and I used to make lists of things. Don't do these things, but do these things. No, it's probably better to look at it this way, that now that we're saved, we want to live as Christ lived. We want to be more like Christ. And you know what? Then uh, by a, there will be a byproduct. In other words, uh, companies that have uh, the regular thing that they're doing, and then uh, there's byproducts from what they're making and so on. The byproduct of you living for the Lord is you won't, you don't make a list. Well, I'm not going to do this, not going to do that. No, no, the Lord will help you as you love Jesus and love your fellow man to take away these things of anger. And I will tell you, I've had through the years, I had to deal with anger a lot and other things. Uh, but with God's power and help, we can be victorious over that as we look to the Lord to strengthen us in the inner man. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. We started with that, didn't we? And verse 2, <laughs> certainly not. And now... Here again, we're not going to be under sin. Certainly not. We're going to live for the Lord. Verse 16, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Before we were saved, we were a sin to death. We're sent to doing the wrong things. But now we have the righteousness of Christ living in us. Verse 17. But God, be thanked that through, though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you shall become slaves of righteousness. Just give ourselves to serving the Lord and doing the right thing. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin...
you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Okay. So the way that we were living before we were saved, before we received Jesus into our heart, was just to whatever Satan wanted us to do, pretty much we did. Whatever the world wanted us to do, our friends or relatives, we just did what they were doing. And I can remember, even as a small kid, doing things that I shouldn't have done with relatives, okay? And uh, because we didn't know any better, we were led by the flesh, we're led by the na sin nature, we're led by, even as I was saved at nine years old, but I can remember, I stole from my mom's purse, and she caught me, and uh, I think I was about five years old when that happened, I mean, uh, and I put the money and folded up real small and put it in my wallet uh, that she had gotten me, and uh, but I, I knew that I had sinned because I, I folded it up so she wouldn't find it, but she did find it. <laughs> and then uh, other things that I can remember that I did before, even uh, before I was nine years old. Uh, but then when I received Jesus as my Savior, I was so happy. I just knew it was like sin fell off of me, something heavy off my back. And I got up on the bed jumping up and down. I remember the story of Pilgrim's Progress and that's as he got to the cross. That load uh, was like a big backpack or like a duffel bag or something but he said it like it rolled off his back as he fell down at the foot of the cross. Well that's what should happen to us. Now does that mean we'll be perfect from here on out? No. I had a Bible study one time that I was leading and somebody came to that Bible study and they were trying to teach the others that, you know, you can become perfect and you're on this earth. And and the Bible says, I showed him, First John 1, 8, that says that if we say that we have no sin, we make him a liar and the truth is not in us. But no, he couldn't take that. And so eventually I had to tell him, you know, if you're still going to, I can't have you coming if you're going to be teaching other people something that's wrong. And that's not in the word of God. We will not be perfect till we get to heaven. Uh, but that is the goal. And we want to serve the Lord with all our heart and do the right things. Okay, here we go. You are free in regard to righteousness. Okay, so before we're saved, we're always uh, enslaved to sin. And sinful life but verse 21 what fruit did you have then in the things of which you were you are now ashamed for the end of those things is death but now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of god you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So when we're born again, we turn our back on the old life, on sin, and the way that... Now that's not easy, because you're going to have to ask the Lord for help. i uh, be honest with you, I had to uh, put behind me... Uh, even when I was older and I was in the military and in uh, different jobs, there was temptations to tell, still maybe drink or to do other things that I shouldn't do. And that is, I had to trust the Lord to give me victory in my life, but to turn away maybe even from friends or from going to certain places. And it says, uh, run from youthful loss, not to look at pictures of uh, the opposite sex and magazines and things like that. We have to turn our back on those things and to 
turn to the Lord to give us victory over it. And we can only do that through Christ's power. I want to just uh, slip ahead in our uh, Roman study just to show you Romans chapter 12. And let's see what it says there. Because I think this t here is a key to I beseech, that means I beg you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. So as we turn our uh, heart away from the old sinful nature, and as we turn to the Lord and study his word, he will draw us closer to himself. And those old things of wrath and anger, jealousy, lust, and there's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those are the three temptations that Satan tempts us with, but also the old nature tempts us in those areas. And look at uh, Eve, when she went and she looked at the tree, she got closer to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and that they were told not to eat of. And she looked at it, and the more that we look at sin, uh, the more that we will want that. That's the way the old human nature is. If we, you know, we, there's the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh, and then there's the pride of life. Uh, and all these certain areas, Jesus was tempted in. Uh, first, uh, uh, remember Satan when Jesus was on, uh, after he had been, uh, baptized by John the Baptist, which he said he didn't, uh, John said he didn't need to be baptized, which he didn't because he was perfect. But Jesus said, for example, he did that. But then he went into the wilderness, it says, into the desert. And there he was tempted 40 days and 40 nights as he was fasting by Satan. And one of the things uh, Satan did is said, uh, make this bread these stones into bread well that would be probably a temptation to the flesh all right um and then he took him up on a high uh, the pinnacle of the temple and says uh, cast yourself down from here and the bible says that uh, he, he, lest he will protect you by his angels, uh, lest you dash your foot against the rock. Well, are we supposed to be um, in that area that thinking that, well, we can do anything and uh, we can go stand out in front of a car and we won't die? We, no. Uh, he said that you should not tempt the Lord your God. And then he was uh, telling him that... Uh, Another temptation Jesus had was he was taken up on a high mountain and shown all the kingdoms of the earth. And so that uh, uh, Satan said, if you will just bow down to me, then I will give you all these. Well, of course, Jesus had those. He will have those in the future. But when uh, Adam and Eve sinned, Satan did get right or control over this earth he is the god of this earth and during this time he does because some people say uh movie stars oh yeah i sold myself out to satan and he helps me do these things and so on well he's going to for a time but then he'll crush you at the end um and so jesus was tempted in that way and he told him to get behind him satan to uh, you see, so Jesus was tempted, and some I've had on the website sometimes, uh, one lady, she said, well, Jesus wasn't tempted in the all the ways that we are because he wasn't tempted in the area of sex and that sort of thing. 
and lust and that sort of thing. Well, it says later on that uh, Satan left him till he came again on other occasions. And you know what? During that 40 days, don't you think Jesus was tempted even in areas that we're tempted in? Sure. And it says, when it says that he was tempted in every area that we're tempted, that means every area, all the ways that we're tempted. And yes, Jesus was in a human body and he was tempted, but without sin. He never sinned. And so there is victory. The Lord can help us. And uh, you think about Jesus said when he's tempted, well, uh, he was tempted over and over again, but he uh, resisted and resisted and resisted. And that's usually where we fall after we're tempted more than once <laughs> and in some areas. And, uh, and, they, and the, there's a scripture that talks about in the area that are, we're so often tempted. Now, as we get into uh, chapter 7, and um, we're going to see that Paul says that he had, he was tempted in different areas. And um, so that he had to get victory over that. And then in chapter eight, um, we'll get into where the victory is. Now chapter seven and um, eight are longer, um, at least chapter eight. And then when he gets to uh, chapter 8, uh, we'll see that he says, after chapter 7, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So we need to walk in the Spirit in our lives. Well, our time is up now, um, and we're going to look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for this time we've had together. We pray that you'll help each and every person, myself included, if there's areas of temptation in the flesh, the old nature, that we will consider those things dead. We will uh, realize that we have been crucified with Christ, and we will reckon that to be so, that we will walk pleasing to you, turn our back on sin and Satan and the world and the lust of the eyes, the lust of flesh and the pride of life. And Father, that we'll walk pleasing to you. We thank you, Father. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I might mention that the pride of life, that is where Satan fell. Um, and if you look at Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel 28, you'll see that Isaiah 14, he says five times, I will do this. So the human nature can be very deceitful. It can be prideful. And the lust of the eyes, the eyes can tempt us and the flesh. But with the Lord, greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. And Billy Graham, he mentioned that, uh, he said, you know, you can't help it if maybe a bird came and landed on your head. Uh, but if you let that bird stay there and didn't shoo it off and let it build a nest on your head, well, then that is, there are thoughts that come to us all the time. And uh, we have to just trust God and look to him for victory in our hearts and lives. All right, our time is up, and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow. The Lord bless you.